time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews, and weekly giveaways. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back, Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We have co-host Bryant Falconer in the house. How you doing, Brian? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Doing good. So let's kind of jump right in here and talk about what you're fixing to light up. Because you're not smoking. <sighs> no. Nah. I don't. Oh, you are. Oh, you are smoking. Mm. Show the camera what you're smoking there, big boy. Mm. Yeah, hold it. Hold it. Hide Cover up face. your face. Cover up the face. Oh, there it is. It is the Padron. Is that a 26 or 64? 64. Nice. Churchill, box yes, press, yes. semi-box press. Semi-boxed, delicious. That's good. Where'd you get that stick? Uh, it was a Veterans Day present to the veterans. I'm not the only one in the house right now smoking one. Yeah, so I see Larry smoking <laughs> one over there. The veterans. Yes, the veterans. <laughs> and that was a gift from? Paul. 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 The homie. The homie. The homie. So... Nice, nice gift. Yes, I heard sir. he came down to the leaf and handed out handed several sixty fours. It blew our minds, man. It really did. I was like, "Wow, thank you." I and he's and he's a veteran, yes, sir. So you know, there's that camaraderie, that yeah. brotherhood Sergeant you guys Major. share. He made the Sergeant Major. He nine, yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm actually smoking a AJ Fernandez. I started AJ. before, so you know, there's not a lot left. It's a little nub now, <laughs> but I'm gonna smoke it all the way down because no it is bro. a Cameroon. No problem, bro. You know, I've been enjoying the Cameroon. Definitely, man. Most so definitely. anyway, let's talk about what we're drinking right quick. We are oh. drinking the. 1792 bottle and bond this was a gift from sean o'connor one of our patreons he came down this last weekend and he was on the show and anyway he he brought some gifts and i tell you what man he made some killer pork chops that were out of this world yeah i heard dude i i, I thought heard. i liked pork chops <laughs> until you got those my son uh -huh. ate them up wow he was like Dude, and what was cool is there were those ones on the, the bone, bone, yeah. and the way Sean cut them up was you got a pork chop, but then you also got a bone with its own <laughs> chop on the end, so you could, like, just grab, grab it, it by the bone. And, and enjoy. Enjoy your pork chop. Yeah, it was a good evening. We hung yeah, out and cool, sat man. by the campfire after eating some good meals, and we smoked some uh, Churchill's from mm. Davidoff which also Sean brought. Yeah. So it was it was a great evening, man. Yes, sir. So I uh I saw a video yeah. <laughs> for your weekend. Yes, sir. You went up to Colleen. Down to Colleen, yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> up, down. You yeah. need to get it right. <laughs> that's, I mean that's my biggest pet peeve. People say my wife I mean, even if say, you go to Chicago, you're going up. If you go to St. Louis, but, but Colleen said, is almost it's not straight across, but it it's it's not even close. Big, oh, it's a, big Larry over here it's telling a dive. me. <laughs> it ain't a dive. It's a dive. Austin is down low. And they're, Austin is south of Colleen, so you keep going south. Right. Yeah. All right. So anyway. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed myself, man. Went down there for What'd the What did you find out for? The, the gender reveal for my first blood. What did everybody granddad. think when you pulled your pants down? Hey, they were like, damn, it got dark <laughs> out here quick. <laughs> I'm not even gonna touch that. See, <laughs> you you open that door. <laughs> so so what y'all find out? Uh, that I'm gonna have a granddaughter. Congratulations, Alana Elise Falconer. Con nice. Yes, young Don, one hundred percent. My daughter, my granddaughter, my son. And, you know, it was a great opportunity because he was sitting there. Turn him up just a little bit. He is. Okay. We was okay. Go ahead. We were sitting there and he wanted to talk to me. And I was like, Okay, what did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, that's the first thing popping in my okay, what did I do wrong? But now he just wanted to thank me for some things and I was like, you know, it made me it made me thankful. I, I had to actually thank God for it. I was like, Oh wow. He said, Because now I know what to do with my daughter. I was like that's my job, man. That's what I'm supposed to do. You know it because you gave me everything you're supposed to do. That's my job. <laughs> Here he that's goes. That's what I do. Here he goes. Everybody, if you're a country person, you know that song. <laughs> and Larry's shaking his head. You know that song? <laughs> yeah, a little Conway Twitty. That's I what I do. Know. I did I know, know you didn't know, but wow. that's a classic. Wow. That's a good thought then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was great, man. It was really great. 
That's awesome, man. Some, well, congratulations the to, to you, brother. Yeah. And then the blessing is going to be because his daughter will be born in March. My youngest son, my youngest daughter by my ex-wife, she will have her baby in April of next year. So I have two granddaughter, two grandchildren in the spring of next year. Nice. Yeah. So we don't know my daughter's gender yet. So you don't know your daughter's gender of the baby. Oh, gotcha. I, was gonna I know say, her hey. gender. If she's pregnant, <laughs> I, we all know her gender. <laughs> so you've there's no mask you, in that. You've, you've actually prepared some very interesting information about cigar smoker psychology. Oh yes. So hats off. I I'm impressed. So let's dive into that. I'm interested. We both I mean, looked and you got the same thing that I got in the beginning. And then you saw well, some you things know, too. When you do the, cigar smoker yeah, they, psychology. Google still wants to throw, throw in, in the cigarettes, cigarettes people. And yes. I'm like, no. So you have to go deep. You, you do go have deep. to go deep. You gotta go deep. And when and you're you, going way back yeah, too. Yeah, because it brought up Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, the king yes. of psychology. And it just his his mindset on it was so great to me. And then I was like, okay, how piqued my, my interest? How many cigars did he smoke a day? How many? It said twenty. Twenty a day. Twenty. He makes me look like an amateur. Yeah, but then what Victor, you know, Viatola. Yeah. Like what I mean, because were these like Corona Petite. I pray they weren't because they didn't have a president days back then. <laughs> <laughs> he smoked twenty of them today. A day, Lord, please, man. <laughs> but then it was a, it was a weird thing that he that they said about him because uh, he offered a cigar to his seventeen year old nephew, and the nephew declined it, and he said, "My boy, smoking is one of the greatest and cheapest in- enjoyments in life, and if you decide in advance not to smoke." I can only feel sorry for you. <laughs> hey, I love that. And I'll tell you, here's another quote from Sigmund Freud that I know. You know, there were a lot of sexual references throughout his studies. Yes. But on cigars, he said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar mm-hmm. with no sexual innuendos, to no it. deep meetings. No. It's just to sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself, and enjoy the cigar. Enjoy your company of the people you're with, and it doesn't have to mean something else. Yeah. And that's coming from someone who thought there was a meaning behind I, everything. everything. Yeah. Everything. And in that, what I got, and going a little bit deeper, there are there were some Things that they identified as psychological, you know, identifiers to cigar smokers. And two that I picked up were loyal and opinionated. And, you know, those are not always easy to have Mm -mm. together. Mm -mm. But when you think about the cigar community is when you meet with other guys that are smoking cigars at the lounge or wherever it is that you may be smoking together, it's like lots of people have different opinions but we are also loyal to the culture of cigar smokers yes Yes. and that translates to respect oh yes you don't have to share the same opinion Mm -hmm. that i have and to still have loyalty to the 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 community community. Mm -hmm. right and so that's one of the things that's different about the cigar community than any other community that Mm -hmm. i know of Mm -hmm. you know you look at other communities, whether it be, you know, you're in a car club, a <laughs> biker's club, yeah. a chess club, <laughs> and you start, like, finding ways to put people in boxes mm-hmm. to where in cigar smokers community, everybody's welcome. Yeah. There is no. And, s- and the, the qualification <clears throat> on that is respect. Oh, oh, definitely. The stereotype comes from outsiders. It's right. not from inside. Right. It is never from inside. Well, you know, and, and I, I hate just like when you look that up on Google, mm-hmm. the first thing is that Google doesn't even differentiate, differentiate yeah. cigars and cigarettes. Mm-hmm. It's, they just lump us all into one. And how many times have you talked to a non smoker and they're like oh no i don't smoke and you're like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. It's totally i don't different. i don't even say that i smoke Mm-mm. but i puff the hell yeah. out of some cigars Tell the truth. you know and, Tell the truth. It, and and then go deeper than that <laughs> it's not even about whether you inhale Hell or not, or not. Mm-hmm. it's about that this is fine quality tobacco that's been blended by a master at being able to put different 
leaves together to formulate a work of art. It's an enjoyment. And that's the difference between a cigar- cigarette smoker and a cigar smoker. A cigarette smoker does it because their body is tone- tuned to it. They have to. They have to. They oh, have when, to. I, when I was a cigarette Me smoker. Me too. I was the same shoot, way. Man, I want to say I quit when I was 35. I'm 51 now, so 16 years ago. Mm. And I smoked almost three packs a day. I was nowhere near that. And <laughs> Good Lord. I mean. That's I, 60 cigarettes a day, man. <laughs> God. <laughs> It was between 50 and 60 cigarettes a day. You matched up to Freud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I mean, it was you, one of the. You know how much a pack of cigarettes costs today? Well. You know how broke you would be today? <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. That would be something, wouldn't it? Oh, when man. I When I quit, I want to say it was about $4 a pack. I quit at two twenty five. Two twenty five. So that the was reason back why in like nine? No, no, that was 2006. like two thousand six. Two thousand seven was yeah. when I quit because I refused to pay two dollars and a quarter. I said I pay two dollars. With that quarter, I'm not paying. And what were you? Saying? <laughs> Coos. Cool Coos. filter kings. Yes, sir. I ain't springing that quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. Two dollars is enough. <laughs> not gonna go twenty five cent over. You drew the line yes. in the sand right and there. They at $2. crossed it. They crossed it. I was done. I'm through, and I haven't had Aren't one you since. Glad? Oh yes, like I couldn't even imagine. Dude, I could, smoking it, a cigarette. it was, it was amazing. A year later, uh, me and my son, we went to play basketball, and I could tell the difference then. I oh, was like, night and day. I was day. like, man, I ain't even tired. We three games, and I was like, I'm not even winded. I'm not. I said, that's all because I left those cigarettes alone. That's what it was. Because right. I was still puffing on cigars, but I just, you, there's a difference. Night you, and day. It's it's totally a difference, and then. Coming to the second part, which was the opinionated verse part of it, the psyche, we're all opinionated because you have your favorites. If I say, smoke this uh, leather rose with me, you're going to look at the look he got. You, see, you missed the look. <laughs> the look he gave immediately when I said that, you're opinionated about it because your palate does not does not translate to that, right. so you will not I, smoke one. I cannot enjoy one. Mm-hmm. I, I've. I lit one up because I didn't know it was a <laughs> sweet tip. tip. Yeah. And then as soon as I did, I was like, nope. <laughs> now, and like you said, though, and that's where the respect comes mm-hmm. in because I respect whatever you want to smoke. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you smoke. We're hanging out. We're both enjoying yeah. what we enjoy. Yeah. And I think that's what it comes down to. And, I mean, there's no other community that is that respectful. Oh, no. I, I was talking to a friend of mine. He – we used to own Mustangs back in the day. At SVO, he had 89 5.0. And like he said, the only thing he did to his was he got the gears changed in the rear and his headers. And he was known as the quarter king. He was. In the quarter, you couldn't beat him. But he has a guy that used to be seen as a friend of his because he lives in Florida. Jumped down his throat and called him a name because the guy drives a uh, Corvette. And all Barry was trying to tell him, he's like, well, back then, you know, the 89s were faster than the uh, Corvette. Corvettes and the Camaros. But then the next year, it flip-flopped, and it was just based upon the year. The guy lost it, man. It was a stream where he was just going on, oh, you're, you're a Ford head. You can't see, Pat. And I was like, that's the negativity of a car club. Right, of right. a car club. There's arguments. Where, where, For nothing. And you think the Corvette's better because you're a Corvette yes. guy. Where – if I'm a McAuliffe guy, an AJ guy, mm-hmm. a Viva La Vida Doesn't guy, a uh, Fuente guy, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to enjoy what you smoke. And you want other people to try what you smoke. Just try. Because, you know, and I've had lots of guys come in. And I, I remember the one that I got my feelings hurt. Because, you know, I, I thought, man, the Cabinet 6. Oh. LFD <laughs> was the cigar. Yeah. To and you. you know how much I love those. Oh, yes, you did. And Dr. Bill came in one day and he was buying some Padron 1926s. And I said, Bill, come back here and let me show you this cabinet six. This cigar is as good as a 1926 all day long. And so he went back there and he bought one. Mm-hmm. And then I think it was like four or five days later, he comes walking back in. I'm like, hey, hey, Dr. Bill, what'd you think about that cigar? And he was like, eh, it was all right. Yeah. And I was like, wow. What? <laughs> what? But then give them the understanding of who Dr. Bill is. Though. Oh, yeah. He Dr. Bill's gone. like 85. <laughs> and he's been in 
Cuba. He's uh-huh. been in London. He goes to, oh, well, before COVID, he yes. goes to London every year, yep. smokes at the cigar lounge that Churchill, Churchill. smoked mm-hmm. at. But, you know, also, I'll say this. When I loved the Cabinet Six, it was early on in my journey through cigars. Mm-hmm. So my palate was not refined at yeah. all. Yeah. It was... It's you know, totally different than it was back then. Right. Your palate and for is. me, looking back, uh-huh. to think that a cabinet <laughs> six would compare to a 1926, it was like, somebody dare, slapped the shit out of me. Dare you. Well, somebody please slap the shit you out of me. Look at the opinion that young man has. Right. <laughs> so, you know, and, and that's when you do that, you go out and you invite someone to smoke something. Yeah. They're not always going to agree with you. And the thing is. And in that scenario, I set myself up. <laughs> For, for someone failure. not, I mean, yeah. I didn't realize the experience of Dr. Bill. Mm-hmm. And also, I didn't even understand that I didn't appreciate the 1926 for what it is mm-hmm. until months later. Yeah. Because the first time I smoked one, I didn't appreciate yeah. it. I was kind of like, eh, it was good. Same thing he gave you for the Cabinet Six. Yeah, but <laughs> but over time... As I've come grew. to yes. love the 1926. Yes. Yes. It's one of my very top yes. favorite cigars. Your palate grew. Your understanding grew. You matured. Right. You wasn't the pepper bomb guy anymore. Right. <laughs> so your, your palate was kind of fluctuating between medium bold to bold, and then you went to medium to the point where the first time I saw him pick up a Connecticut and smoke the entire Connecticut, I was in awe. I was standing there just, I was actually just watching you. I was like, he going to put it down in a second. He going to put it down in a second. And you smoked the whole thing. And then you had something good to say about it. And I was like, well, you know, that was the evolution. That was, like, that was, that was the, Rob? that was the start of trying new cigars. I thought you was a pod person then. <laughs> A what? A pod person. You popped out of pod. Uh, you think I was taking Tide Pods? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, no. No. So, <sighs> anyway, let's get over to... Did, did you have anything else to nah, say about that? that? Okay. Those cool. were the two that hit me most were the loyal and opinionated. Very good. Well, I wanted to jump into the pick six this most week. definitely. I'm going to let you go first while Luke... Oh, no. I do have my phone. <laughs> He has his list. He has his list. Oh, my goodness. He has his list. Okay. My number one was the Viva La Vida Club 500. Nice. You know me. You know me. You know me. You know me. <sighs> Macala Samacha, Viva La Vida Club 500. Those are my go-tos. Those are my one and twos. But I tried a Particus Decatas. It's the 10th anniversary. Decatas. D-E-C-A-D-A-S. Very nice. That was a good I don't. I don't think I've had that one. And then Jay gave me a Macanudo Inspirado green label. Okay. And that was good. I remember you said a, a while back that you had tried it and you couldn't even remember it. <laughs> but I tried it. I was like, this is a good stick. And Jay was like, yeah. He said, they gave us these and, you know, I, I tried them and I was like, you know, that, that's a good stick. That's why I offered it to you. I was like, yes, it was. It really was. So my three this week were the Viva La Vida Club 500, the Particus de Goddess, and the Macanudo Inspirado Green. Very nice. I'm, you know, I Uh-oh. have not had the Macanudo Green label. In a long time, because you told me you had it a, a long time ago. I ha- I know I had the red. And the orange. And the orange. And you told me the green. I, I may not have had the green. I may have been confused, because honestly, I don't remember it. But I got to say... Was I wasn't another, a fan of the red and the orange. You told me that too. Yeah, it just it just didn't do much for you me. You may have just clumped them all in. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're inspirados. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to like them. I wanted to like them. I really did. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm-hmm. So, my first cigar this week Rona. is no, no Rona, <laughs> no Rona. So. My first one is, and I don't know if you've had this one. Have you had the Buffalo 10? No, sir. Let me hold that up right there. That's a good stick. No, sir. Yeah, that was the gift, and I really enjoyed those. I, You know, we don't really have them around here. And then my next one was the H. Upman 1844 Nicaragua, which is blended by A.J. Fernandez. I've had that one. That's That's a good good stick. stick. Yeah. And, you know, I, I... have had troubles with the Upmans. Oh, yeah. And and I got to say, though, they took care of me 
because they actually sent me some replacements. Uh -huh. And so I'm not going to complain you, any bro. more than what I have done already. You, bro. And then my last number three this week is the San Latano, the uh, original Maduro, also blended oh, by A.J. Yeah. Fernandez. We love those. San Latanos, <laughs> man. We've we've gone through a lot of San mm, Latanos. We love those. Yes. <laughs> there's a there's a true love between the three old heads in here and Lucas over there. Not yet. <laughs> and then I also I'm gonna throw in a bonus uh -oh. this week. Because it's been a, a while, but I was down at the leaf and I had the uh Oscar which one is that? The 2000 and, uh, what is that? 2012. 2012 yeah. 2012 yeah, Maduro. I'm a fan a, of that stick. That's a good stick I too, man. I forget about that one sometimes, and then you go back to it, and, and you're, you're like, like yeah, oh, I remembered I really like that stick. Why? <laughs> so, anyway, that's our top six. Yeah. If you haven't tried those, go out and try those. And if, if, if you have tried those, let us know what you think about oh, yeah. them. They're going to be on the uh, website? Yeah. Uh, Luke's going to put those up. Mm -hmm. We'll have them on the website and uh, down in the show notes mm -hmm. on the YouTube channel. Yeah. He said, so. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Got it, buddy. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so how are you liking that uh, 1792? Uh, is this 92 or 94? 1792. 1792 Ball and Bond. This is. Big fan. This is not overpowering. It has a nice uh, caramel, slight caramel, but a little aroma. And it is. And then 100 proof. Dude. Oh, there goes a the moth. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. As you hear us both taking a <sighs> sip. <laughs> so let's talk about our sponsors right quick. 100%. Man. Let's see. Let's, let's start with The Leaf. <clears throat> The Leaf in Abilene, Texas at 1166 North 2nd Street. You're going to want, if you come if you come within 50 miles of Abilene, go ahead and drive the extra time because, True. you know, now we were hanging out. What? What? It's next week. No, no. We were hanging out in the lounge Sunday afternoon watching football, and we had a special visitor come by. Yes, sir. And anyway, he is a friend of the Straight Cut. Yes. And he listens to Cigar Talk. And anyway, yes. he came by and Casey. surprised us. Casey yeah. invited him back mm -hmm. once. Well, Casey actually said, hey, do you uh, listen to Cigar Talk? And he was like, yeah. And so anyway. He told him, he said, you know that the hosts are in the back. He said, what? He said, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, so he came back, and his, apparently his dad's in the hospital. Yeah, prayers. And prayers for yes, him. Yes. And But anyway, his name was Greg, and mm -hmm. we just want to say thank you so much for thank swinging you, by. We thank enjoyed you, the conversation. Yes. And I told him next time, come by and smoke a stick with us. Most definitely. He was making a run because he had just came to see his dad only. Yeah. And then I, he came in and bought a few sticks, and then he spoke to us for a little while, and he said he had to get back on the highway because he's in Lubbock. Yes, right? he yeah, was in Lubbock. Lubbock. And mm -hmm. did you see one of the sticks he had was the Roma Craft yes. Slobber Knocker. Yes. Holy yes. crap. Dude. Yes. <laughs> if you're smoking that, you're not going anywhere no, for sir. a while. No, <laughs> sir. Remember the old Snickers commercial? <laughs> not going anywhere not for going a while. Anywhere for <laughs> Grab Definitely. a Slobber Knocker. You're going to sit down? You gonna be there? You know who's been smoking those? Who? Ponytail Gary. Wow. You know because he smoked the digger, digger. Yeah. But he's been smoking those slobber knockers wow. too. So, it's a good stick. I get, it is. I can, I can see. I can see why. I can see why. With his palate, yeah. Yeah. I can see why. I can see why. It's not for the weary. No, it it, it isn't <laughs> at <laughs> all, bro. <laughs> it isn't. So anyway, uh, talking about the leaf, if if you're within 50 miles of Abilene, definitely want to drop by. But also, if you look down at our show notes, we always put their phone number so yes. you can call and make an order. Jay will get your cigars shipped out quick. Immediately. And he carries Viva La Vida mm. and McAuliffe. Mm. And, and, you know, everybody always tells me, we I haven't tried that cigar because I can't find it. Yeah. Well, well, Leaf. The Thank leaf. you. Thank you. You call Jay. You call Scott. They will get your order shipped out. You'll get it in two days. Yes, sir. And they carry. I mean, they got the Club Five Hundred, oh, the Jester. They've and you know what? When I was in there last week, they also had the McAuliffe. Mm. 
A lot of people are saying, you know, everywhere they they're go, sold they're sold out. out. Yes. Jay's got the McAuliffe. He has a, the whole line of yes, McAuliffe. He and he has a big line of Viva La Vida. Mm-hmm. I mean, he carries the Torpedo, the Robusto, he the Toro. He listens to his consumers. He yeah, does. He really does. And, I mean, he has a humidor that's like, I. you know what I, I told somebody? I was like, when you walk in there, it's like walking into Noah's Ark. Yeah. It's that big. <laughs> I look at it. Want to take two of everything? I look at it as a, as a fun as a fun house aisle. It looks like it just keeps going and <laughs> <Yeah>. going. <laughs> it going. does, man. It's huge. <laughs> so if you can't have the opportunity to go by and check out the leaf, give them a call, man. They have a huge selection. They will take care of you and get your stuff sent out right away. Yes, and sir. plus, if you're a pipe tobacco smoker, Ooh, I think they to. have like a hundred and forty different pipe yes, tobaccos. You have to. I mean, it's crazy and. If you want the best coffee in the world, call them up. I'm, I mean, anybody who's ever stopped by there will tell you I'm not BSing you when I say they have the best coffee. Oh, yeah. they, he, and here goes back to listening to the consumer. Our friend Larry doesn't like, he doesn't drink caffeinated coffee. So what did Jay do? He, I think he went down to some lady store and picked up some. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. But no, you know what? He got a special. He uh, has another pot that he brews decaf just on. Just for him. Yeah. Just for him and those that don't like decaf, uh, that don't like caffeinated. It's vanilla bourbon. He said it's vanilla bourbon, in fact. <laughs> you know what? I think I had a little sip of that. You did. And it, it, was, it was impressive. It wasn't my thing. <laughs> but I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. That, it kind of reminded me of the bamboo rum. It was oh. a surprise. Bamboo, not bamboo. bamboo. I always want to say bamboo. Bamboo. So, anyway, Don't definitely destroy. definitely check out the leaf. Call Most them up, definitely. get an order in. And, and then also, next, our other sponsors, one is Viva La Vida uh, from Artisanal Tobacco, blended by uh, A.J. Fernandez. Yes. I'm a huge fan of the Torpedo. Dude. You're a huge fan of the Club, Club 500. 500. And, I mean, I smoke them all. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Me, me it, too. And it's like, you know how I, I pick out my Viva La Vida? I look at my watch and see how much time I have. <laughs> if I've got plenty of time, I smoke the torpedo because it's a it's a good hour and twenty minute smoke for me. How it is? I just sit back. I smoked one earlier today, sitting over at the computer, and a I mean, hour and twenty minutes. An for hour you? and twenty minutes. What was it? Seven feet long? No. <laughs> I want to say hour it's a and six twenty feet. Inch. <laughs> so, and you like the Club 500. Oh, man, That's a good hour and man, 20 minutes it, it smoke is, at least. for me, man. Yeah. I love it. And I take my time and I enjoy it. And I do the same thing with uh, the Sumatra. I take my time. I enjoy it because it's just like, it's it's, it's a blessing to me, man. It really is well, to me. If you're interested in some Viva La Vida's, look down the show Ooh. notes, call Jay. He'll get you hooked up. Tell the truth. And let's talk about McAuliffe. Photo. Dude, if. They Fo. have a budget for every cigar. Four to forty two. Four to forty two. You hear I said forty two. Forty two. So <laughs> he's really here's, going hood. Here's, nah. the, here's the thing. The price spans the spectrum. Yes. But the blends also oh, come on. span come the on. spectrum. Come on. I mean, you have the experiencia. You have the herencia, the which I have been b- digging the, the Habano. The Leanda the Leanda, Leanda two. <sighs> So much. The Reserva. Reserva. Did and to, let's the, not forget oh. the Medallia. Ah, yes. <laughs> There's no way anybody that hey, knows you can forget the Medallia, So, did you man. notice last week, David from the Cigar Roadshow? Yeah. Did you hear? Yeah. He said the best <sighs> Medallia was the Corona Extra. Yeah, he rode with you. Yes, he did. He Good guy. Good Dan, guy. Dan, Dan, Dan. Good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, Dan. I'm trying. So, anyway, uh, their line goes on forever. They have an ambassador program. Go by, click on the show notes, become an ambassador. You get your own coin with your own number. Dude, did you hear David from the Texas Cigar Roadshow? He's like, what was his number? Like 110. Wow, he's low. Maybe one no, it was lower than Bryant. Huh? It was low. One ten, wow. one thirty, somewhere in that neighborhood. Wow. But I was like, because I was like, I've been smoking Macala for a while, and he was like, Yeah, me too. And I was, he was like, I was like, What's your coin number? And he's like, One ten. I was like, Oh, <laughs> hey, let me shut up. <laughs> I'm a uh, two ninety eight. 
<laughs> so I'm not going to say anything else about the numbers. I didn't even bring you up. There's no need to. Right. Because he's lower. So anyway, uh, the thing about Macau Cigars, and we talk about that, they support their brick and mortars. Mm -hmm. They support their ambassadors. They support the consumers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not the fancy, fun, entertainment stuff to yeah. say. That's just the they talk collar. the talk. Yes, they walk the walk. Yes, yes. And so if you want to experience McAuliffe, all that other stuff is impressive to me and you and other brothers of the uh -huh. leaf who are like solid everyday smokers. But if you haven't tried McAuliffe, <sighs> go on, try man. a Medallia, a Leanda, Experiencia. Mm. Dude, that Herencia, yeah. the Habano. I know. Yes. Oof. That is 100% the, the, the bomb, bro. Yeah, it really it is. It's the bomb, bro. So go I by there. Check out the, the McAuliffe line wherever they're offered. If they're not, call take Jay. That's he'll take care of say. you. Yeah, he'll take care of you. So anyway, so let's talk just a minute. You know, the Cowboys were off this week. Really? Yeah. So they didn't lose this week. Bingo. We 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 <laughs> they did didn't not lose. suffer a loss. They did not lose. <laughs> and so here here's my plan if I'm the GM. Okay? It's not it's not happening, we know. But right now, well, I think right now they're positioned to get the number three pick in the draft. And you're just hoping that uh, – I'm hoping the Clemson quarterback's yeah, available. Yeah. We cut Dak. We spend all that money we would have spent on Dak on the defense. Yeah. yeah. That's my plan. Yeah. And, I mean, dude, is that the only quarterback available that's going to be good? There are a couple that – but nobody's on that level with him. He is that far ahead. He, he's that. I he's, he's got a national championship up on his. Belt. I've heard he could have came out last year, and he didn't. He didn't. He stayed in another year. Why did he stay in? Because he thought they were going to get another one, and he's also looking for that 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 piece of that piece of uh, bronze that has that that stance. Yeah, thing. that stance. But the thing that happened that that just derailed them was COVID. And the, are they winning this year? They're winning, but they're not winning. Winning like. People, they should have walked away with stuff, man. Right. They, I don't know if they, if they paid, played LSU yet or not, but they should walk away with it. All right, let's change. Did stuff. you see? Did you see oh. how uh, Michigan got, Michigan got destroyed, sir? By Notre Dame? No, it was um, <clears throat> oh, who was it? Oh, it wasn't Notre Dame. But man, they, that was the worst loss they've had since nineteen forty something. <laughs> that's been a bit, <laughs> <laughs> dude. That's sixty some years. No. They got sixty. They, That's they got to be 60, 63 to sixty three to something, man. Wow! They got the break speed off of them. Hey, if it was nineteen fifty. It would have been seventy years ago, so it's been over seventy years. That's, Jesus, that's, that's that's a beat. It down. just it just it just amazed me how teams like you know even with Notre Dame, you know Notre Dame, the uh, the uh, Miami in the nineties, there was nobody better than Miami. No, because we took their players and put them on the Cowboy squad. I remember Man, Russell that, Maryland. That was the uh, that was the DA squad. Dude, you remember Russell Maryland? <laughs> ATF squad. Dude, Russell Maryland was a beast. And then what happened? We won a Super Bowl. Yeah, and then and then we won another one. And then he got caught on on twenty with thirty seven keys. <laughs> no, I don't remember that, dude. It's what? all over. Oh, you talking about Russell Maryland, not not the offensive lineman. You You're talking, talking about, about Nate Newton? Yeah, you talking about and Russell. Did, and Russell he, Maryland and, ran backward. He, he ran the wrong get, way. He did not get caught with keys. He got caught with four hundred pounds of marijuana <laughs> crossing the state line <laughs> after he retired. <laughs> Dude, we know that Texas four hundred pounds. Texas is going to be the last state. To legalize marijuana, hey, so you know back why? then he knew it was extra hey, illegal. You know why they pulled him over? Why? Because he's driving this car, <laughs> and when they pulled up beside him, they see they run his plates. They see who he is. They know who he is, uh -huh. and the car's not leaning to one side because <laughs> he had lost all that playing weight. No, no, no. What? Because he had four hundred pounds of to, regu <laughs> to regulate that. <laughs> I'm just You're joking. wrong for that, I'm bro. Just joking. You're wrong. For that. Now that blew my mind. That, when that happened, I was like, "Really? Come on, dude!" But you know what? He, I think he's like doing broadcasts again. Because in Texas, we forgive. I was going to say everybody can be forgiven in Texas, especially when he's dealing with football. If you were a cowboy, we forgive you. 
In a heartbeat. I mean, look at Michael Irvin. Uh, in a heartbeat. Dude, <laughs> Michael Irvin is on ESPN. He is on the NFL Network. Well, where, wherever he is. <laughs> he's, he's on both of them. Oh, okay. He's on the NFL Network with and an I mean, afro. That, I haven't seen him in a <laughs> with while. With an afro. Cause, I mean, nobody can get the haircut, really. Uh, he got an afro. I got you. I haven't seen him in a while. So, anyway, let's, let's change gears here. I, I was going to bring up one more little quick football tidbit. How about New Orleans beating the brakes off of Tampa Bay? <laughs> Dude, that was an embarrassment. That was the joy of my season. Was you it? know, because our season is going. Like, we can't keep anybody healthy, so we just did it. Which we, we turned into the hospital unit for the NFL. <laughs> Everybody's hurt. But to see Brady throw three interceptions, and every time he went back, somebody was in his face. Oh, they were abusing him. And, you know, I couldn't understand why. In the fourth quarter, when they were losing thirty-one he was still to three, in the game. he was still in the game. Still I was the like, game. because he gets hurt. He had, he's forty-three, isn't he? Y'all can pack it up. Yeah. I, he's he's old. Yeah, that's all I. Do. He gets hit for real. He's done. Yeah, he's done. And there's always it's somebody. Like, uh, uh, what was that? To put the original. The original was with Burt Reynolds. What, what was the the foot the prison oh, football oh, movie? Oh yeah, uh, the longest yard. longest yard. Remember when the old guy. Went in. Uh, <laughs> I broke his freaking neck. <laughs> but the old guy said, I got one more play in me, and he ran. And, and he made it in his own, but he got killed almost. Yeah. And he's like, why would you do it? He said, I had one more play in me. That's the way Brady <laughs> I got one more play in me. Just well, and one you know, hit, the thing man. about it is, though, if you look at uh, who's the quarterback for the Saints? Oh, uh, Drew Brees. Brees. That dude's old, too. 40. Yeah, he's 40. up there. And but see, Drew Brees don't hold the ball as long as How old do. is Aaron Rodgers? He's getting up there. He's in his late 30s. Yeah. Late 30s. So, I mean, they're all three mm-hmm. pushing time. Yeah. And then you got them young boys waiting at the – chomping at the bit, as you say, down in Texas. Right. <laughs> hey, so I want to shift gears here. We, we're going to make an announcement here soon. We're putting together something special. Special. We're thinking probably May, maybe June – but we're going to do a cigar talk getaway, a cigar talk retreat. I was just going to say retreat. <laughs> <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna rent B and B, a B- Air- Airbnb B- that's like a badass man cave. It's got I don't know a million dead animals on the wall. <laughs> it's got a pool table, outdoor kitchen. It's got two fire pits. It's a made square, for a, men. A square a scarecrow. Springfield Lake. <laughs> no, no. Please bring your weapons. <laughs> no, no. No weapons allowed. So, anyway, here's what we're going to do. We're looking at renting this place out and having 10 guests, and we're going to do, like, cigars, mm-hmm. bourbons. Bourbons. We're going to have a pairing, taste testing. We're going to have Meats. boatloads of cigars. We're going to have boatloads of bourbon. Mm. We're going to have some amazing steaks. Uh, We're going to have some amazing pork chops. Uh, We're going to hang out at the fire pits and smoke cigars. How did uh, Tim wasn't? So, <laughs> and then during the day, you can take a nap or <laughs> like the host. <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, we ready to go to the Leaf? Y'all nap, go ahead. Nap time. Nap time for me. <laughs> but, no, we're going to hang out during the day up at the Leaf. Then we're going to come back. We're going to play poker. Mm. We're going to smoke cigars. We're going to we're gonna have pairings. Talk noise. Uh, we're going to have our Good special joy, liaison. Yes. Sean O'Connor. O'Connor. Dude knows his bourbons. Oh, knows his beats, too. Knows Cigars. Cigars. And he's like Ooh. a world renowned chef. Yes. He doesn't have that in writing, but trust me. <laughs> when you see the skills, you recognize. Wow. Him. Yes, you Dude, recognize. He him. cooked pork chops last week mm. that I didn't even know I really loved pork chops. <laughs> I liked pork chops. You say didn't you fell in love with them? Dude. Have you ever had brine pork chops? No, I haven't. Do you know what that is? I know what brine is. You know what brining mm-hmm. is? Mm-hmm. But I have never had brine. Dude, pork these chops. pork chops were crispy on the outside, mm-hmm. watery, juicy, juicy, just busting full of flavor on the inside. Mm. 
And I, I mean, I, I was blown away. But so what we want to do, and we're going to only have 10 spots available. And so our Patreons are going to have first shot at booking their slots in the top 10. And then once we're done offering it to them, we're going to move ahead and offer it to other listeners. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be uh, Friday. We get there Friday, hang out, cook pork chops, smoke, drink bourbon. And then the next day, we'll go down to the Leaf after Sean cooks breakfast for everyone. Yes. We'll have our coffee. We'll smoke more cigars. We will congregate. Congregate. I like that. We're going to have a good time and like congregate that. fellowship. Yes. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do pairings mm. with these bourbons. And we're going to have cigars for everyone. Those that don't know Sean, he travels with a what barrage. Is it? What is it, Larry? A uh, a briefcase full of bourbon. A briefcase full of bourbon. <laughs> No, duffel, duffel bag. bag. A duffel, duffel bag, bag full of bourbon. Yeah. and when Dude, he... did you try that scout? Yes. That scout was amazing. Yes. I got some before he left. Oh, I was like, oh my I would like, goodness. that was something special. But anyway, anyway, shoot me an email if you're interested. But we're going to be uh, looking at the Patreons. are going to get first shot at one of those uh, for the Cigar Talk retreat. And uh, anyway... That's just something that we've been working on behind the scenes uh, coming out in probably after the first of the year. We're doing new shirts. Yes. We're going to do new shirts. We're going to do basically what we're going to do is we're going to do the same shirts as what we wear on Mm -hmm. the show. It won't have the big patch on the Mm -hmm. back, but it'll have the patch on the front. We will have your name embroidered on the front, and then we will have the date on the side Side. just like when Mm -hmm. we started. So anyway... So one of the next things I want to talk about was, you know, it's it's one of those cigar types that's not on my radar very often. And that one would be. Can you think of what it would be? Heck no. I mean, what what's a cigar other than like a sweet tip? A but, blunt? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Something yeah. that you wouldn't. Well, no, I would not smoke a blunt, but Philly. that's not a cigar. Philly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't smoke a Philly. White Isle. <laughs> No, this is a type of cigar. Oh, okay. Oh, a type. A candela. Oh. You know, the green cigars. Yeah. I don't really, hmm. and it's like, I really haven't smoked very many. It just looks different to me. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, why is it green? Yeah, yeah. So I did a little reading. Uh, cigar Aficionado posted an article okay. recently about it. So I read into it, and I was like, I didn't know. Hmm. You know, the thing about it is, we make a lot of assumptions true in the cigar community opinionated opinionated <laughs> without doing research true so they wrote an article about it it's very interesting but at one time candelas were like the number one cigar sold in america mm. i did not know that wow because when I've gone in to, and you know now when you walk in the humidor, you really don't, don't see, see a lot of like candelas. candelas. That's true. And when you do see one, it's it's a rarity. Uh-huh. And I've only the only one that I've really ever smoked was the filthy hooligan. I smoked that one too. I who who makes that? I I can't remember who makes that. Is that uh, Rocky Patel? Maybe. Mm. I, you know what? I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of hate mail on this Ooh. one because I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I smoked the fil- Filthy Hooligan, and I really didn't enjoy it. Mm. And maybe it was one of those things where I had never smoked one before, uh-huh. and I had prejudgment Opinionated. before I smoked it. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't sit back and enjoy and it enjoy, and yeah. try to you know pick out the different notes yeah, just the, the basic enjoyment of the stick you, you yeah didn't, you I, didn't I, allow I, it to, i yeah. prejudged it yeah. and so but after reading this article it really makes me want to try a few okay because you know i tried connecticut's yeah. and i found connecticut's there, that i love a couple that you love yeah and it just blew my mind still <laughs> so anyway you know the candelas had oh our uh, Peep and Tom, Larry, <laughs> says that the Filthy Hooligan is actually made by Alec Bradley. Yeah, okay. We're a fan yes. of Alec Bradley cigars. Yes. They make a lot of good sticks. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I gave it a fair shot. Mm. So I, I'm, I, didn't, I don't know that that's the Candela that I'm going to go after when I start my looking around. But 
I'm gonna go check out some Candelas. That's a, that's that's the cigar community right there, giving it another try. Yeah, giving it you, another try. You never try. know what you're that's missing. Right, that's right. You know what? I mean, two months from now, you may see like forty Candelas in my humidor. You never know. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but you know, <laughs> to take place of those forty medallions in your humidor. But you you spoke about in your research, you saw that there was one person of particular that smoked a candela oh yeah you know jfk yeah jfk they said that it was hard to tell from the photos because most photos of him smoking cigars were in black and white true so but they knew this to be true because whenever they sold some of the estate of cigars like a large majority or percentage was candelas wow so you know i mean hey if the president who like outlawed yeah, Cuban cigars, cigars, but before he outlawed them, he ordered all these cigars from Cuba, <laughs> liked them. You know, maybe they were good. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I thought it was interesting how Candela's are made differently than regular cigars because I didn't know. Yeah. Educate us. Okay. So basically, what happens is, you know, whenever they go through and they cut the tobacco in the fields, mm-hmm. They cure the tobacco. Yeah. They hang it in the barns. And the candelas is the same way, but they shut the barn all up. And they started out at like 90 to 125 degrees, which so, is hotter. And then they up the temperature up to like 165 degrees. So they like put them in an oven. It's like an oven, but it's done at a very fast pace uh-huh. for a shorter time. Okay. So... It remains green because it doesn't give it the time to dry out. So it dries it immediately almost. Right. And it maintains that color. Color. Okay. So what I'm interested to see is what that does to the flavor of the tobacco. But Candela's are made way quicker than your regular cigars. And they say, you know, the tobacco industry or the farmers really like that because they're getting a quicker turnaround on their money. That's true, too. So I found that interesting. And I I got to get a list of Candela, Candela cigars that, like, maybe would be, like, the upper echelon. Because I have no idea what Candela's I'd want to try. That could be our next tr- trick. You know what? Maybe next week for the show, I'll bring on some Candela's, Candela's and yeah. we will give them a shot. Hey, no problem. And give a real-life review. <laughs> yeah. And Because you, you know me. If it's great, I'm going to tell you. But if yeah. it sucks, I'm going to tell you that, too. Real quick. <laughs> so... That was that was that was something I wanted to add to the show just because I thought it was very interesting. And when you talked about uh, JFK being a part of that, it, it sparked in my mind. Okay, how many U.S. presidents smoked cigars? I'm gonna say, <clears throat> I mean, we've had 45. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say, out of 45, it would probably be about 15. That's about a third. Do you know, or are you just giving me trivia for me to just sit here and wonder? You were one. Well, no, because Trump smokes cigars. So no, that, no. He Trump does not smoke so cigars. So it, it is 14. It's 14. 14. You, you were one off. I'm one off. And here's the listing of them. Starting at the beginning, you have James Madison, Andrew Jackson, Chester Arthur, Benjamin Harris, William McKinley, William Howard Taft. Then you have Ulysses S. Grant. Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Dwight Eisenhower, JFK, as you st- as you noted. What about Teddy Roosevelt? I he- said Teddy. Oh, okay. I miss. I, you know what? I was I was daydreaming for a second. <laughs> I wasn't really listening. <laughs> then Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush. Bush. I did not know W. Did. Yeah. That surprises me. Ah. I thought he was a cocaine guy. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. That's true. No, 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 no. He admitted to that. Tim the Tool Man. No, 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 back, no, no, no. back in the day, he said he had a problem and he got over it. Yeah, just like somebody said, I didn't inhale. <laughs> Regardless. But yeah, so 14, 30%. Yeah. That's 30%. So, I mean, that's one third of U.S. presidents. Mm. That's a lot. That is. And you think about. Really, it's probably more than thirty percent because some presidents serve two terms. Yeah, so you're more especially than, Teddy Roosevelt, right? What do you have? Three terms? 
That was Frank. Oh, that was Frank. Frank FDR right. had four. Yeah, FDR had four. Ooh, man, four terms. So he died in office, though, didn't he? Yeah. After that, they passed the law. Like, yeah, that you couldn't only serve two. Yeah. Four terms. That's that's almost sixteen but, years. So really, you're probably closer to thirty five. Yeah. Maybe even closer to forty. So that puts you over more than. Uh, yeah, that puts you over more than fi- that fifteen. That you, uh, well, thirty percent that you said in the beginning. A third of it. Thirty three. Yeah. Goodness gracious, so, man. Anyway, before next week, I'm going to pick up at least a couple of candelas for me and you to smoke next week on the show. No problem. We're going to give it a shot. Uh, <laughs> Larry so, said, what about me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> hey, you know what? You bring bourbon, I'll be bringing three candelas. candelas three candelas. So, well, hey, guys, I want to give a shout out to all our Patreons. Yes. They're a huge support of the show. And, you know, we do a pre-show for them. And so we do that. Uh, They are just like the backbone of Cigar Talk. They help us every every month. We don't have enough words to thank you. We don't. Because Cigar Talk has grown immensely because of the Patreon. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've done so much for us. We want to give you a just genuine thank you for you guys supporting us every month. It's just humbling and a blessing. Yes. So, anyway, uh, before next week, I'll get some Candelas. We'll try those out next week on the show Most and definitely. give feedback. I mean, you know what? Here, here's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing that, and I'm going to try not to be prejudgmental, <laughs> but I'm going to say you're going to love them, and I'm going to be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to sound like Dr. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. It was all right. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, we appreciate you coming by, hanging yeah. out with us. I hope you enjoyed a good cigar while you listened to the show, or maybe it made your commute to work better. Just a little bit. Uh, but, anyway, we just want to say thank you for listening. And, also, if you listen to Cigar Talk and you like the show, tell your friends about it, man. Mm. We want to grow the show, and you have way more influence yes. on cigar smokers than Word we of do. Mouth. We are like two little peas in a pod. <laughs> 100%. So, you anyway, big hope you guys have a great <laughs> week. And until next time, keep smoking. <laughs>